This week we have some new audio related products to announce, Court 64 orders open for developers, a new Affinity Time release, and more. This is the video version of the community update, so this won't include everything, but it will give you the synopsis. Also thanks to JF, Alex, Brian, and Lucas for helping out, and also check out my channel, Pete's Loving Nerd, for open source related content. We will be hosting our second quarterly Q&A later on the day this video goes live at 7 o'clock GMT. You can ask questions through Discord, Telegram, and IRC, but make sure to at Lucas in the questions so he can get to it in case it becomes a giant wall of text. Otherwise, join in tonight on YouTube, Discord, or PeerTube. The Pine64 and PinePhone Matrix chats have been upgraded to version 6 of the Matrix protocol from version 1, which should fix some problems, but you will need to manually rejoin the channels with a link to do so in the original groups. We'll also be having a new Pine Talk episode this month, although there was no episode last month due to the host being busy with IRL things. The product team is in talks to bring back production for the Pinebook Pro, so we will keep you updated for resuming production in our social media and news channels. Finally, we will be launching Pine64EU on March 10th, and there will be updates on Twitter and Telegram, so stay tuned. Last month, we showed off our plans for the new generation of Prograde Pine64 hardware with the Quartz Pro 64. These will be available to order in our developer system with a questionnaire to allow the right people to get them. The cost to produce the board is north of $300, however, we hope that will become the go-to board for RK3588 development, so a decision was made to subsidize it and sell it for $150 to developers. There is a coupon system where if you get approved, you will get a coupon to purchase a unit. We will most likely send out two or three rounds of coupons, so if you aren't in the first round, you could be in a future round. The sign-up page should be coming online in the next few days, so keep an eye out. Also note, these boards will not be FCC or CE certified, and these are meant for the development community, and should be seen as prototype hardware. And in some countries, you need to register the device as an uncertified prototype, so be sure to check with your country's local laws before submitting an application. This month for April Fools, we announced the Pine Buds and Pine Pod. This article was somewhat serious, although there won't be any unicorns, but we are prototyping flashable wireless earbuds and today we are introducing a development board. At first, we will distribute these to developers we know are interested in non-Linux projects like this, however in the future we will allow anyone to pick these up. The board features 2x coaxial and optical input and output, a 3.5mm headphone jack, 4.4mm and 2.5mm balance jacks, an SMA connector, and USB-C as well as touch and LCD ports. This project will be completely community driven and its success will depend on the community around it, so the community will set the course from the beginning to the end. The first device to be based on the Pine Sound dev board will be the Pine Buds wireless earbuds. These will offer features such as ambient and noise cancellation, and long battery life. Each bud has three microphones and a touch base input on each bud. We also designed the cradle to allow custom firmware to be flashed with UART for flashing. This will allow you to flash custom sound signatures, determine touch controls, and even turn them into hearing aids. The hardware has a lot of potential and we hope the project gains interest from the community as a whole, so stay tuned for more news. A new production run of the PinePhone keyboard case is coming up soon, and it has proven to be a popular accessory with it selling much quicker than the other cases. But we expect the current production run to last 2-3 to three months, so you should be able to get one. Speaking of the keyboard case, the keyboard power driver has now been upgraded and some fixes are coming to improve battery life and improve the charging experience of the keyboard. When charging, it will now charge the phone's internal battery first before charging the keyboard and the keyboard will only charge the Pine Phone when the Pine Phone is at around 20%. There will also be a way to change the phone's LEDs to indicate battery status for both batteries. LinuxPhonesApps.org has launched with it having a list of Pine Phone compatible apps. Not all of them work on every distro, not all of them are feature complete, but this is still a very good resource for the PinePhone. Postmarket OS and Mobian now use Tau Boot instead of regular U-Boot, which allows some extra features while booting. This will mean that PinePhone Pro users will need to flash Tau Boot on the device before using these OS's, but it will improve the booting experience overall. Danielle from Elementary OS is exploring porting Elementary to ARM and possibly Linux phones in the future. Danielle has received a PinePhone Pro and the team already has experience with the RK3399 thanks to work to port Elementary to the PinePhone Pro. We have also seen the documentation improve a lot on the Pine64 wiki for the PinePhone Pro, with a state of software section at the top showing off current functionality. Other parts of the wiki should be easier to read, including the software section of the PinePhone Pro page. Finally, Plasma Mobile will be seeing a new update soon with several bug fixes and optimizations and new features. 
The mobile data toggle now remembers the setting across reboots. A virtual keyboard toggle is added to the quick settings panel and you can now reorder the quick settings menu and there have been other fixes too. The media widget in quick settings now supports multiple sources and the lock screen has a new notification widget. APN settings have seen some UI fixes and Spacebar has had several UI and bug fixes too. There's also work planned for a lock screen overlay to handle things like calls and alarms, although this is still in the planning stages. AffiniTime 1.9 has dropped with a new terminal watch face, and you can now also disable Bluetooth connection, which increases privacy and saves the battery. The heart rate sensor has also now been improved thanks to help from WaspOS. This new release also brings improvements to notifications, including some bug fixes for call notifications and the alarm app, and AMPM 12 hour time is now better supported if you do not want to use 24 hour time. We have a lot of contributions but cannot merge every single one of them due to memory limitations and we have to be careful not to hit the memory limit to add new features in the future. Hopefully in the future though we can add support for other languages although this requires a lot of new memory. The Affini watch face is a cool pull request but watch faces also require a lot of memory. Another cool pull request is a QR code application that displays four QR codes specified by the user. This can be used for web pages, online accounts, and even vaccination certifications. Unfortunately Affini AffiniLink is no longer maintained due to the developer getting a new job with no more spare time to continue development. However, if anyone is interested in maintaining it, it is open source so it can continue. We would like to thank Xanem for the work as it is a great proof of concept for an iOS companion app. Lepion and JF are still working on the Pindio stack to make sure the hardware works as expected and set up our development environments. LUP has been documenting everything with a new extensive article about running NutX RTOS on the Pindio. JF is working on porting AffiniTime to the stack, and this is quite easy as the display and touch panel are exactly the same as the one in the PineTime. As you can see, the display driver is now functional and even works a bit faster than the PineTime. It can go even faster when more memory is dedicated to the display driver. The driver for the PineDio LoRa USB adapter and PineFone LoRa backcase have also been updated. There are some changes needed to support kernels newer than 5.10, but the driver for the CH341 chip also needs an update to support kernel 5.16. Last topic for today, the desktop and portable PinePower PSUs will be making a return to the Pine Store next month, and we are glad to report some improvements have been made to both designs. The desktop unit now has grounding ports on the USB ports, and the portable Pine Power has now seen a redesign, shrinking it and preventing it from falling out of place when weighing too much. So, that is this month's update and have a good life until next month.